ICA Evening News with anchor Sean Mackinich, sports Cassie Kramer, weather Dr. Aaron Stoverwright, your reporter in the field Kasperian Kittredge, and your co-anchor Carly Kerr. Good evening, I'm Carly Kearns, and welcome to your security and privacy update for HMIS and HMIS conforming system users for 2023. We've got a lot of information to cover. Isn't that right, Sean? You are correct, Carly. I'm Sean Mackinich, and thank you for tuning in. In tonight's broadcast, we'll be covering the most common security and privacy concerns regarding inputting clients into an HMIS or HMIS-like system. This information is being brought to you by the good people at the Institute for Community Alliances. This presentation will provide an overview of the following topics. New user training changes, user requirements, agency requirements, security concerns, and more. There's a new group of young people making big decisions in Des Moines. That's right, Sean. Let's go to Casper Kittredge live at the Institute for Community Alliances and find out more. Thank you, Carly. It's even more than just Des Moines. In both the Des Moines and the Balance of State COCs, there are groups of youth who have experienced homelessness or who are passionate about ending youth homelessness who are working uh, together to do just that. These are groups that are made up of youth who are usually between the ages of 16 and 24, although sometimes they can be a little bit older. And in both the Polk County Continuum of Care and the Balance of State COC, they are compensated for their time and the work that they do to educate others about what being a youth experiencing homelessness is like, as well as what can be done to help end youth homelessness. If you want any additional information about these groups, please contact the respective COC directors. Back to you. And now a very special report from ICA Director Gary Wickering. As we close out year 2022 in the homeless services industry, um, we are looking at the new challenges we are facing. COVID funding um, that was specific to the coronavirus is now ending. Um, the eviction moratorium has ended. Um, we are seeing less affordable housing become available and more evictions. And communities are struggling what to deal with their increasing homeless street population. Um, the criminalization of homelessness is a serious threat and one that must be dealt with. Housing is a human right. And what we can do here is produce the numbers that show the need that's facing those at the most risk in our society. The HMIS notice of data collection sign will be posted at any client intake location. Your agency has a written privacy policy with allowable uses and disclosures of protected personal information. It will be made available to the client upon request. All computers connecting to the HMIS or HMIS complying systems must be password protected, have virus protection and a firewall in place, be in an area that can be physically secured and locked. Users have requirements as well. They will have a unique user ID and password for their use only, and this must not be shared with anyone else. You may only view, obtain, disclose, or use the database information necessary to perform your job. You need to log off when you're ready to leave and be careful to input quality data. This one is on the test. Personal protected information is any information about a client that can be used to identify them specifically. Examples of PPI are name, social security number, phone number, disability, etc. Examples of allowable HMIS uses and disclosures of PPI are to provide or coordinate services to an individual with a proper sharing agreement in place, for functions related to payment or reimbursement for services, to carry out administrative functions including but not limited to legal, audit, personal, oversight, and or management functions, for creating de-identified PPI, 
Never send client PPI in an email. That is what the client's service point ID numbers are for. Now it's time for Aaron on weather and passwords. Thanks, Carly. The weather's beautiful out today. We're going to talk about passwords. So, when you log into the HMIS system, it requires that you have a password. And that password needs to be at least eight characters long. In addition to being eight characters long, some of those characters have to be made up of different kinds of characters. So there's uppercase and lowercase letters, there's numbers, and then there's what they call special characters. And you're gonna need at least one of those. Those can be asterisks or parentheses or periods. It's up to you. Go crazy. When you're picking your password, uh, don't write them down. Make sure it's something you can keep in your mind. Avoid obvious things. Don't use your kids' names. Don't use your pets' names. But do use something you can remember. And then switch out some of the letters for those special characters. So maybe there's an L and instead you use an exclamation mark. Maybe there's an A and instead you use an at sign. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Carly. Back to you. Casper got a chance to speak with ICA Iowa Director Gary Wickering about a big change in our reporting. I am here with Gary Wickering to get some breaking news about the advanced reporting tool. Gary, ICA has had some updates regarding this tool. Can you tell me anything about it? Yes. Um, we're very excited that our advanced reporting tool has now been uh, upgraded and rebranded as business objects. Um, we are leaving behind art and all of its old Java configurations moving forward um, into the future with new technology. And this is something that people have been wanting for quite some time. Can you tell me any more about it? Uh, the best things that I can tell you about it is that all of the reports that you're used to seeing are there. The navigation is just a little different. Uh, the file index will be on your left. When you enter the system, you'll end up on a dashboard. Um, you're still able to schedule reports, have them delivered to your email box, and you can see an audit history of the port of how many times it's been run. So we're very excited about this new uh, page in our reporting story, and we look forward to all the tales that we could tell with this homelessness data. Thank you, Gary, for that great information. Thank you, Casper and Gary. When it comes to data quality, it is expected that all HMIS participating agencies ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of all information entered, protect against any threats to security, ensure compliance of all users, ensure all users attend an annual security and privacy awareness training, perform an internal annual security review to verify the security of equipment and compliance by all the users. Agencies participating in an HMIS must comply with federal, state, and local confidentiality laws. The HMIS policies and procedures do not replace your agency's policies and procedures. They are meant to supplement any policies already in place. Agencies must comply within limits to data collection. Collecting data from clients to enter into HMIS must be relevant, appropriate, and lawful. Agencies must post the consumer notice at the intake or comparable location with general reasons for data collection and reference to the privacy policy. Agencies may infer consent for users in the posted consumer notice and written privacy policy. That is a lot. Mm. That is so much. Let's check in with sports. All right, team. What should an HMIS system be used for? Completing enrollments and assessments for a client being served by your agency. Referring clients to other agencies or services. Creating case notes and tracking client progress. And coordinating services for a client. HMIS should not be used for personal gain, biased opinions, stalking, sharing with others outside of service providers, showing service point to a non-licensed person, or curiosity. Additionally, things that are not allowed include staff having clients sign blank releases of information to be used at a later date, the use of general releases, which is not allowed by state and federal law, 
staff disclosing client information to third parties without client authorization, staff discussion within professional settings, such as informal case discussions that occur on site where others who do not need to know are present. Staff discussion outside of professional settings, such as discussions in public places. Staff identifying individuals as clients at social events, self-help groups, or in public. And client files left in an open area for others to see. Client information should only be shared and or searched for on a need-to-know basis. Need-to-know means the legitimate requirement of a person to access sensitive information that is critical to the performance of an authorized assigned mission of an agency authorized to use and enter information onto HMIS, and the necessity for access to specific information required to carry out official duties. Thank you, Cass. Sean, that looked a lot like last year's report. I did not notice. Now it's time to talk about our tracking policy. The system provides a tracking log of when users sign in as well as when they have touched a record within the system. This ensures personal accountability regarding what is done within the system. HMIS and HMIS-like systems use the highest level of transmission encryption possible. Remember, you have a professional responsibility to maintain a client's right to privacy. There are penalties for violating this. Agency Participation Agreement formally establishes parameters for HMIS participation for an agency. These are updated and signed annually. HMIS User Agreement formally establishes parameters for HMIS participation by an end user. These are signed and submitted directly to ICA. The Consumer Notice notifies clients about an agency's privacy practice and how the agency can use and disclose PPI. The Consumer Notice must be posted somewhere visible to clients completing an intake within the agency. Inter-Agency Data Sharing Agreement formally establishes parameters for uses and disclosures of client data that are electronically shared between agencies for the benefit of the client. All staff within an agency using HMIS must have read and understood the Consumer Notice. A verbal explanation of the Consumer Notice includes what is HMIS, why does the agency use it, security issues, privacy protection, benefits, and risks for clients. The staff provides the consumer notice to the client and explains it. Organizations must have an assigned privacy officer responsible for ensuring agency compliance with the policy and procedures. HMIS data standards. They are the data standards established by HUD as a means to ensure that every HMIS captures the information necessary to fulfill HUD reporting requirements while protecting the privacy and informational security of all individuals who are experiencing homelessness or near homelessness. The data quality standards ensure the completeness, accuracy, and consistency of the data in the HMIS. The agency and licensed users are responsible for the quality of the data produced. Back to Carly. HMIS participating agencies agree to ensure the accuracy of information entered into the system. They also agree that any updates in information, errors, or inaccuracies that come to the attention of the participating agency will be corrected by that agency. The three components to maintaining data quality are a review of timeliness, completeness, and accuracy. Well, that's it for this year's security and privacy training. I'm Carly Kearns, and thank you for tuning in. And I'm Sean McInich. Stay classy, HMIS users. <laughs> What's my name? Okay. Looks like HMIS data standards. HMIS data standards were put together by some dudes at HUD to uh, make sure that when you put things in there that they're the same and consistent. <laughs> Mommy shark to do 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 do, mommy shark to do 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 do, mommy.
mommy shark do 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 mommy shark daddy shark do 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 daddy shark do are you ready kids hi hi captain <laughs> I, I can't, can't hear, hear you hi hi captain <laughs> oh who lives in a pineapple Spider under the sea spongebob square pants <laughs> <laughs> absorbent and yellow and squishy as he spongebob square pants you flop on the floor and like Up on the floor, it's <laughs> nautical nonsense. It's something you wish. Bob Square Pants. They flop on the they step on the floor yeah. and flop like a fish. SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> oh, SpongeBob. Yeah.